this is uh, an application for uh, backup instrumentation of for smaller aircrafts just to demonstrate what you can do with sensors but uh, i'm not going to talk about flying physics here i'm talking about uh, how to access the sensor and the, the uh, gps module uh, from android directly so the glass cockpit has got quite a bit of uh, flight instruments in it um, most important the speed indicator and um, these instruments need a very frequent update of position so that they can uh, calculate things like speed or curve radius or something like that and uh, this worked nicely on the nokia n9 i got a position every second and it was quite perfect and when i switched to android i ran into trouble because uh, I got uh, a position every six seconds, which is by far not sufficient. And uh, on Qt 5.1, I got no position at all. So the solution was uh, try to get the position from Android yourself. And that's quite a bit of work. But you need to Here we are. Uh, you need to access Android yourself. And uh, I tried that with Eclipse Android Development Toolkit, and I got a position every second from my phone. So that was uh, motivation enough to start trying to get those positions from the Java environment into the Qt application, which was already running on the N N9 at that time. And uh, you basically need four ingredients for that. You need a Java class that accesses the Android operating system. You need uh, a little patch in the Qt activity that has been created by Qt Creator. And you need a set of JNI or Genie and uh, compatible functions that can be called from the Java class. And finally, you need something like a distribution class that distributes the data to your Qt application via signals and slots. So I'm going to show what these uh, ingredients are looking like. The first is the native uh, JNI functions. They uh, store the data that come from the Java and GPS service and they store it in global variables and after they have stored the, the, function, the data in the globals they call the key object um, derived class to further distribute the data to the Qt application and uh, this is one of those impressive names the good news is you need to write this part of the name yourself. The rest is generated by a program called Java H that creates a C header from the uh, GPS uh, service class that's uh, simply a Java class. You call Java H on, on GPS service.java and you get the uh, templates for your functions. And I strongly recommend not to do it by hand. So the second is uh, the adapter class. This is a key object derived class that's living in the Qt uh, uh, application and in the Qt applications thread. That's important. The Qt application is running in a different thread from the Java class. So what we need is we need to cross the thread bridges and sorry go no this seems to have a double click ability one GPS service.java 
So GPS service.java is a Java class. The Java class is living in the Java environment in Android and it implements native functions. And the native func functions call the GNI functions and uh, uh, transfer the data. And the last line shows uh, the, the patch in the uh, uh, Qt application. And this is one of two lines. The other one simply declares a variable GPS service. So one click. These are the native functions that uh, I showed you a few minutes ago. And finally, the transfer mechanism from JNI to Qt. And that is simply done by a class that is derived by QObject. And it can send signals and receive, receive slot calls. And this bridges between the threads. So you have no uh, problem with threading in the C environment. What is important is uh, that uh, you have to use the uh, threading functions from uh, JNI, and uh, then it works perfectly. If you don't use the uh, threading bridges, you will end up in a lot of trouble. So this is the last one. You see the application here uh, and they are ready for takeoff and because uh, that was a lot of uh, talking about code which you didn't see you can download the source codes from that uh, URL and this is a documentation on the slides also in this file so if you want to do it yourself I strongly recommend uh, have a look at uh, this code Thank you. So how many minutes was that? Three. <laughs>